Good evening, Final Fantasy Randomizer fans, and welcome to the Duckling Boot Camp Community Race for Final Fantasy Randomizer. I am Sonny Roth 11, and joining me in the booth tonight is Jay Scheidel. Good friend, y'all know him. Jay, how you <laughs> yeah. doing? Hey, doing great. Ready to see this crazy match coming up. <laughs> wait, we have a match? What? We have, wait, there's a match? I don't know what you're talking about. I thought we were just here talking. Something like that. So oh, we got the, the duckling seed this week, yeah? I believe we do, but, uh, you know, I think this was a too loose shard hunt flag set. If Maybe we should pull some stuff up and actually read it. How about that, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. This is too loose shard hunt. So instead of having our normal four orbs like we always have to do to get through the match, we've got them broken up into shards. I did not even see how many we have to catch. 28 shards throughout the game that'll be randomly placed in our boxes. And in addition, two of our key items will be out there somewhere random throughout the game. On top of that, with the shards, not only are they gonna be spread across boxes, but the fiends will have them. There will be two on Lich, two on Carry, four on Kraken, and four on Tia, mm -hmm. making a total of 12 shards available just from killing the bosses. And just as an FYI for later on, obviously these are duckling seeds for our new runners, but if you continue doing this further on, it's tied to the location, not tied to the actual boss that you've eaten. So whoever's in Sky will give you four. And that is if you do shuffle the fiends amongst their yes. locations. But... What we got going on? Oh, I... That's actually a good point. So we see both runners are going with Thief, Fighter, White Mage, Black Mage. So let's let's go over these blursings we've got. This Thief has improved Cat Claw and Clean Magic. Clean Magic not being too terribly bad to see. The Fighter has plus 10 vitality and gives a bonus 800 GP to start. You want to <laughs> take the White Mage and Black Mage? be so nice okay yeah the white mage has elemental plus magic so we're gonna get a little bit of black magic in with this white mage and also plus 25 agility so we might actually get see some running coming from that white mage the black mage has plus 15 luck and resists thunder death and lightning oh wait time death and lightning excuse me time death and lightning indeed and the runners are off one thing to note with that elemental plus magic is that will be all of the tier three mm -hmm. elemental spells here in white magic level one we see harm four so those tier three elementals for the most part are going to be outdone unless an enemy is weak to them yeah and just as an fyi that clean magic on the thief could be any three random status cures including life and life two so we could see a, a stone or remedy we could see poison we could see yeah life Indeed, and that will be really nice to see either way. Level First 1 Black Magic. Oh, yep. Level 1 Black Magic, we see Ice 2 Stun, Blind, and my personal favorite spell in the game, Brack. Brack is really underused, especially early game, when not much resists it. It is, and a lot of your status base spells actually do some huge work in the oh, early yeah. game like it's a little bit rough to see against pirates but here where you've got garland fight you might have an astros fight coming up like it's gonna put in some work indeed we see a pro ring plus four down here on the bottom left box of the temple of fiends up in the top left boxes we see a shard and ice Ooh. armor plus five that's already some ninja equipment yeah, well, the fighter can wear it right now to get started with, so, yeah. Indeed. That's All right. Easily in-game. Shum and Windfox both on to Garland. Garland's dead. Garland's dead. You know, he wanted to knock the Light Warriors over, but instead, he got knocked over. <laughs> the Windfox getting a little bit trolled there by the bats, but, you know, it happens. We see a crowning crystal here. I mean, a crystal and a crown. Could it be a crystal crown? What about a crown made of crystals? 
I mean, anything is possible. But that's really nice to see on our routing here, because now we can go hit Matoya and just like, hey, we'll go and then come back the other way. So, exactly. And Shum just going straight to Matoya. We're going to see what she has, if anything, or in her boxes, if anything. Ooh. But she has a TNT, so she's... Hey! Holding on that to them explosives. Ice sword plus four. Very, this very good weapon. Beefy. This fighter is... Uh, it's a powerhouse. It's a scary yeah. powerhouse at that. I, that's equipment that I take into Topher already. And we are two minutes in. Yeah. And with that 4400 EXP coming out of Matoya's cave as well, that's just some massive, massive level boosting. Yeah. With Harm 4 and the other Elemental Sweepers in tow and Ice 2 on the Black Mage... Shum's just going to go straight to the pirates, take him down, and see what Bicky has to offer here. Oh, yeah. And this is a good idea to do, because like we saw in Corneria on Windfox's screen, we have our hint givers on. But like the other NPCs in Provoca, the hint giver doesn't show up until after Bicky. And these dwarves are going to get paid off quickly. As Bicky holds on to the adamant this time around. The tail is on the robot. We see Fog 2, Invis 2, Harm 2, and Armor Ice, or Null Frost, if you are used to the later iterations of the game. And <laughs> that is a level 2 nuke. Okay. That level 2 was actually quite loaded with Lock 2, Zap, Lock 1, and Nuke. That's really nice stuff to see. Like, you kind of want Nuke to be by itself, but you're not going to probably grab Zap with Nuke on there. I mean, Shum grabbed all three, so it all yeah. worked out. All right, Shum going to take us on over to the Dwarf Cave. We're going to see what is in there. While well, Windfox buys Lock 2 Nuke, that's a base that. Katana and a Silver Helmet plus 2. That Katana, super useful after promotion. We see Ooh. that that Adamant turns into a Canoe, so that is River Transportation. Yeah, strongest canoe in the game here. As well as probably the heaviest. Probably. Ooh. And the Maza plus 3 coming okay. in off of Narek. He blew the rocks up, and they were holding on to a Maza. Now, here's kind of a random question for you. I wonder what level Shum is. We know we're at like six or something going on in, but we've got Thief lockpicking at level 15. We could get some of these chests that, we're locking, that are locked if we took maybe a level or two. I think he's at six or seven right now. Okay. Uh, he was at seven, so he's yeah. at eight now. Yeah, it's a and little bit too low. Gets an herb from the crown. I would ask if this is randomized, but since that crown came from Sarah, we know <laughs> for a fact it is. Well, and you know that we have a Masa Moon plus three at six minutes in. Yeah. Yeah, details. All right, level three, as well as level four magic's coming in here. We got fast at level three. Super nice to see, as the ninja will be able to pick that up as well after promotion. White magic, level 3 life as well. Okay. Like to see that for the knights whenever we get promotion. Indeed. There's some good stuff already on the table. We see wall, mute, exit, and afer here at level 4 white magic. The cube is on floor 3 of earth and level 3 black or level 4 black, I'm sorry, has temper! That that hint is a good one to find there because, or wait, would that be uh, is that vampire chest? I do believe that's a vampire chest because if I remember correctly I believe earth was incentivized. That's what I'm double checking right now. It is. Okay. I don't say that was good because it'd tell us where Loose was, but yeah, that's Vampire Chest. 
All right, coming in to see what the Elven Prince gives, and the answer is the Rod, so that will be Earth completely clearable after the ship is found and maybe the canal? I forget if free canal is on. I would imagine so. Yeah, it's looks like it is incentivized somewhere. Okay. All right, Shum is going to take us down into the Marsh Cave. Totally makes sense. There's a ton of boxes here, and the other options heading on over to Volcano and Ice, which really just puts you away from Marsh. But at the same time, you have a lot more boxes in Volcano, and you have about the same amount of boxes in Ice. Yeah. The other problem is lack of warp right now. You remember what level we get uh, level four spells? Because we did find X foot. Nine. I Ooh. no level eight for. Level I think four? The first charge. It's either eight or nine. Vorpal Ooh. minus two, but a quad X sword is okay. very very nice to see, as that will allow some potential early grinding on this tile. But these werewolves with stop. Yeah. Big oof. Preemptive coming into the wizard tile to get the mystic key. Okay. You like to see that. That then allows for these three extra boxes to be checked here in Marsh as there are loose items, so they could be anywhere in the world. And we already have some route divergence with Windfox deciding to skip Marsh and mm -hmm. go straight through the Crescent Lake River system. Interesting to see if Shumbabi tracks down those key locks. Because are we just going to go over and go to Volcano and uh, Ice? Or are we going to go back north, back to Corneria? You know, that's a fantastic question. And we will have to wait and see. That's a Gershark Wissag tile here. <laughs> that's some pretty juicy EXP. And there's that slab coming in that... We saw the hint for earlier on in the seed. And last box here on the bottom of Marsh. It is level 8 for the first level 4 charge, level 10 for the second. Okay. I was about to say, Shumbabi, do you forget about the top? But nope. No, Shum ended up doing the first step off power cycle because yep. it leads into an encounter giant, giant sword, sword plus four yeah be nice but we found that maza i mean and that ice sword plus four so they're both yeah pretty powerful swords as wind fox is deciding to go straight for the ice cave well with, not with exit i don't mind it but wow yeah, a little bit of a gutsy play here. And gold bracelet plus two. Shum is going to say nah. Yeah, we didn't have a house to get our exit charge back, so we'd have to walk back out of it. Trying to catch what, what Wind Fox is level eight. Okay, so we should have a cast of exit. Yeah, Wind Fox, I know, has a charge of exit. We see a soft potion, 224 gold, and the loose Ooh. ship here in Northwest Castle. That gives Shum the ability to chase down that Earth Orb as well as hit. Well, we Earth need the canal. Three. And if this canal is over here in ice or something, he's got to go do the same thing Windfox is. And that's a possibility, too. But it could also be in one of these boxes, as it could be the second loose for all we know. Yeah. 6,993 EXP is a nice find. Opal armor plus five. Holy cow. Silver bracelet plus four is not too bad either. So question in chat here. Where would the shit be docked when found at Northwest Castle there? So you have to think about your vanilla location. So you couldn't normally walk over here. It should be if by uh, Elfland. Yes, it will be by Elfland. It'll be in the closest dock in the inner sea that could be reachable by Vanilla. 
And that's really just important for like these two locations or over an ice cave. Yeah, since uh, since technically speaking, Northwest Castle is on the Elfland side of <laughs> everything. It does spawn over by Elfland instead of what you would think would be the closer dock of the Dwarf Cave. Opal Bracelet found for Shum. I believe that was a plus two, so very nice find as a whole. But I imagine if money's needed because there's a shop item, it's going to get sold. And that's the loot in the shop. Yeah. Called out in chat earlier for 8,000. Not too bad. Indeed. Got one more question here in chat to talk about a little bit. And Sonny, maybe you've got some insight on this. Why aren't the runners equipping their armor so far? Like, what's up? Shum's grabbed a lot. So the the <laughs> short of it really is it takes time to actually jump into your, your menu and equip said armor. Granted, mm -hmm. yes, you do get your absorb from it. And yes, it does allow you to take less damage unless you grab something extremely important, such as a ribbon. Yeah. Usually it's not worth the time to jump in the menu to equip the armor. But well, and especially what Shumbabi's doing right now. Check. Oh, okay, that was incentivized. But oh my, yeah, that's that's yeah. big for Shum. But I could see what he's doing right now with checking all these free boxes. We know there's not much in the inner sea that's going to kill us, so we could be waiting till we check all these free boxes, so we're not constantly in the menu and in the menu. And then. Forget the about other it. thing that Shum's <laughs> doing on top of that is doing some very heavy encounter manipulation as the first mm -hmm. encounter off a of power cycle is on that first step. And then you've got a very, very generous hero run to lead into the second encounter. But at 14 minutes and 20 seconds, Shum is that's in the air. Ridiculous. <laughs> no, that's good. I love it. Well... I don't know if we'll see this on Shumbafi's screen or not, but Winfox did find a blue dragon on the sixth tile down in uh, Ice Bottom. Depending on what it rolled, that could be a decent little grind. But you know, this Agama here could also be really good. It might be a better grind. Three hits, 599, terminated on the Agama, and that's the canal coming in for Windfox. Fox. Okay. But... It's not entirely needed as Shum is checking out what Sarda has. And yeah. the answer is the bottle with the fairy. So Sarda is pointing Shum over to Gaia. Well, and we have the we have the rod. We're able to do everything in Earth Cave. Wouldn't be surprised if we just do it here and get it out of the way. I mean, that is a possibility. We see Lamp, Cure 3, Pure, and Cure 1 here at level 5. White Magic, level 5. Black Magic, Stop, Quake, Lit, and I didn't see what was in slot. Fire 4. 3. Fire 3. I'd grab some Fire 3 down there. <laughs> oh, and there's the bottle that we just grabbed. What's funny is that Fire 3 technically is in its vanilla level, but not in its vanilla slot. <laughs> if it were slot 1, then it would be completely vanilla. All right. Shum is going to head to check Toflocked as only one of the loose items has been located. Mm -hmm. But we need shards regardless. I think Shum's only at two when I saw the menu last. I do believe you are correct on that. And Windfox is just taking this Agama right now, trying to uh, get huh. some bonus levels, maybe get that Thief Lock picking online. I can see these zombie dragons also being pretty useful. Zombie dragons are a nice find early on, and Windfox did not heal up the thief before coming in here. Surprised to not see the Cardia checks from Chimbabi. Flew right I'm, by him. I'm not just yet, because he could be holding off until promotion, even though promotion mm -hmm. technically is not necessary here. But there is that small chance that tail could be the other loose. And if you're going to check him anyway. This is true. All right, but Windfox finally out of Ice Cave. I'm going to guess heading down to Volcano, but we'll see. 
Oh, <laughs> Kareem's with Stone Touch. Stone Touch. Oh, that's a big yikes. All right, Shuma into the waterfall. And, uh, you know, having a very safe run through here thanks to how that encounter table has laid itself out. So I know we've talked about the encounter manipulation a few times on these seeds, but you want to give us the TLDR on it? Like, what is Shum doing to get us this? So there are a couple different ways to really look at it, but the best analogy I have is think of your encounter table as a deck of cards. And once you pull a card after X amount of steps that says encounter, you'll get that encounter. In this case, it is the first step after a power cycle. So Shum would have gotten an encounter right there, but instead did a soft reset, loaded back into the game, and that skips the encounter entirely. Mm -hmm. Even when you soft reset, the game remembers how many steps you have taken in order to then go, oh, an encounter should be coming up here. And that ultimately is what dictates getting an encounter is it's based upon the amount of steps you take, based upon what your encounter rate scaling is, and then how the deck of cards itself, per se, is laid out. Oh, I forgot we had this flag on. I see why he waited. Oh yeah, yeah. Mohamed's <laughs> Horde. <laughs> but with that, with that encounter manip, Knowing where you you have bound, soft, and hard resets are a really good thing to get a little bit of this going. You don't have to know the full encounter minute, but if you notice, like like Shum is doing right now, that there's a single encounter, just really dang quick, stock up on tents and skip it. Exactly, because you never know when you're going to get that one really bad encounter and mm -hmm. it just kills you. Yeah, popping in, using that tent and resetting might take you two seconds or so. But yeah, then you find that one with Blaze or with Nuke, and yeah, you've wasted a few minutes. So we got a hint here in Gaia that the Roost Stick is on floor two of Sky. Okay. And the Fairy had the Oxy Ale. Another vanilla. Well... Did you happen to see what Windfox found just a second ago? I did not. There was an eye tile on Volcano second floor. Ah, that's pretty so, good. That could be some really good grinding if we end up needing it. And we see that the Lafayne Superstore is on. Always nice to see. Saberbonk plus five there for Shum and getting blocked by the Lafanian linebacker, if you will. <laughs> hey, did you know that the floater was in a spot that you've already been to? <laughs> did you know that the floater's in a spot that's required to get here? All right. All right check out our superstore. I'm going to pick up Invis 2 and Life 1 on the night. Going so into level 5. Not going to pick up anything. Level 6 has heal 3 in slot 3. So it right. totally makes sense. Grab some thief magic. We're going to love seeing that uh, nuke in level 2 here. Yeah, that nuke level 2 is going to be huge. And going to go ahead and pick up the lock 2 as well. Pick up that level 3 fast. And then the level 4 temper. These just fell in like perfect. If... If uh, Locke would have been one or Nuke would have been one, that would have been it. And let's not forget level six warp. <laughs> All right, Wind Fox going through the Volcano Armory finds another katana. Super yeah. nice to see. And There's another is... Ice Sword plus four there, too. Oh, yeah, and picking up more shards and finds the waterfall tile and a ribbon plus one. Okay. 
is deciding to equip it onto the fighter and runs into that spike tile that is a very, very tricky one. Mm hmm. The one right at the corner there? Oh, yeah. yeah. The one that I forgot about many a time. Every Shum single time. Shum's in ordeals. So, the four pillar part, which pillar do you want to call? Uh, let's go two. It's going to be two. I'm feeling a pillar four maze tonight. So, let's, it's going to be one or three. Got it. Let's make them walk for it. Not it's one. Not one. Okay. 33% chance. Here we go. Shoom. He's resetting out to reset the encounter table. Yeah. Okay, okay. What do we got? All right. Pillar two is... Ooh. The correct answer. Progression. I think. No, it's uh, not. It's a loop. It's a big loop. Nope. All right. Pillar three. three. It's correct. Right. Three and down. Hey, quad X helmet. Quad X helmet over on Win Winfox's screen. Some really, really nice finds there. A hold stick plus five and dragon oh. armor. But deciding to not take the hold stick, which is perfectly eh. fine. Yeah. The nightmares have been switched out with the earth elementals, so pretty nice to see there. Excal. Yeah. Ooh, baby. We're getting some of these vanilla legendary swords here. All right, it is the Agama room. Well, we know it's not Agas. We know it's not Eyes. We know it's not Zombie Dragons. What are we going to get? Mages. <laughs> okay. Fine. The Thor Hammer being the Ice 2 Hammer. It only switched spells this time around. And Dragon I did not see... Three. It's not a bad find. Yeah, i throw it on that Thief if we don't have anything better, because I don't think we have the Maza for Wind Fox yet, do we? I'm not sure. If Wind Fox has it, the Knight is swinging it, or the yeah. Fighter is swinging it. Okay, he has it. Honestly, he's got the two correct items. I just didn't catch if we went over there. So, yeah. Using Ice Sword and then using uh, Maza on the Thief is the better option. All right, so Shum is looking pretty good on key items. Is oh, missing the fuck? chime, the cube, and the yeah. canal, I believe, and that's it. Yeah, well, Windfox pulls us a carry fight, so nothing too crazy. Took out our white mage, but we survived the rest. Wait, there was a carry? Yeah, yeah. Blink and you missed it. I mean, I looked away for about two seconds and then I saw she was dead. <laughs> All right, so with what Shum has right now, he's going to go ahead and come here into Volcano and start picking up some of these boxes, at least some of the big box areas, if you will. Well, and Shum has the knowledge, at least, that there's no more loose items. Because he's the one who got the roost stick, right? At least the hint. I mean, is Sky incentivized? Because it's but on Sky 2. Would... Oh, it was in Sky 2, not Mirage 2. Okay. Right. My, my head had it as Mirage 2. Got it. No, it's Sky 2. Yep. So, no, we could have another one. So Which is why I'm do. thinking the cube should be that loose item. Yes. But 
no, Cube is on Earth, isn't it? Didn't we get that? One of them... It was either Chime or Cube on Earth. Mm -hmm. I forget which one. Cube's on Earth. Yep. Thank Our you, Rosalo. tracker restreamer extraordinaire. Remembering the hints that we forget. Yep. And I think Windfox got lost on heading to the <laughs> fortress here in Elf Castle. As Shum is on the Agama floor and is just going to blitz on through to take a look at all this and get this stuff. <laughs> There's some good items back here, but nothing needed that I remember. I mean, like the knight? dragon armor being the best thing that he could find right now for that knight. Yeah. We had an opal plus five. The dragon's going to give us more resistances, so we like it, but we had armor. Indeed. And Windfox finally going to Marsh. But at a much higher level, so... Oh, yeah. Most of the stuff's going to run away. Shum going ahead and taking on the waterfall pack here. Yeah, not too bad. It's a good, good experience grind. It's fairly good EXP right now. I mean, that just threw the party up to level 16, so it's a plus and gets that hold stick. Mm -hmm. So here's a question in a moment. Shumbabi's going to grab this Excal. Already got the ice plus four. You grab it for the, the extra elemental damage? Yes. Agreed. Just curious. <laughs> I mean, you have to think about what the elemental damage bonus is set to, and it's it's set to 30. So it's, yeah. it's going to be dealing a lot more damage as a whole. But Chumbabi's still just not equipping stuff. No real reason to just yet. Yeah. It's only when he finds something super important that he decides to equip it. Such as the ribbon as well as that dragon armor. Mm -hmm. And now it is on to a carry one for Shum. When Fox already having this done, we're going to see fight, fight, wait fast. Swing, four hits, 349. Carry opens up with fast. Katana swing, four for 104. And the fast, of course, getting last turn <laughs> order. But quad X goes out, and bye, yeah. carry. With the scaling, yeah. Carry didn't have much, much to last there. Just like that, that's another two shards for Shum, sitting at 11 out of the required 28. Yep. All right, we on. are going to go into Ice Cave, so not required for Shum Bobby, but we don't know, or he doesn't know that yet. Like Wind Fox doesn't know that this is not required for yep. him either. Does pick up the key, sees the four for minus two, and goes, nah. Yeah. And I don't think Wind Fox entirely knows which of these rooms have boxes. So, going horizontally, on your first set of rooms, it is your first and last room. On your second set of rooms, it's your first and... Or, on your second row, it's your first and second. On your third... It's the second, third, and fourth, and then down on the bottom, it is one, two, four. From left to right. Mm -hmm. The wiki has a couple of maps through all this that suggests go go look at, kind of memorize your your routing through it. And definitely want to give some massive shout outs to everybody that contributed to the wiki in order to oh, yeah. have all of the information in one readily available place. It is a fountain of information for anything you could need. You want to know what one of these blursting does? You want to know the maps to get through a location? Go there.
if you play with alternate final bosses, you want to know what these alternate final bosses do? Well, you can do you can find that out. There's a reason I currently have it tabbed open here. The Quadex Helm, and there's the Blue Dragon for Shum, deciding to not take it, and yeah, a whole bunch of nothing. Yeah. All right, Wind Fox about to be over in the Northwest Castle to pick up the key locks, oh, or just oh, going to oh. skip it. That's that's Floater. Go go south. Go down. No, Floater was in Canaria locked. Was it? Pretty sure, because I'm pretty yep. sure that the there was a, there was a Northwest there. lock was the ship. Oh, okay, that's right. So this could be okay skipping. Indeed. But it's not recommended to skip stuff in a too loose set. Nope. All right, Ruby has been fed to the Titan. Checking to see if there's a loose in here, but there's an Aegis shield. Okay. So we'll take that. This knight more or less has a ribbon equipped without having a ribbon equipped. Yeah. Second best thing, and honestly, maybe even better. All right, Wind Fox is in Canary Castle, going around to the locked chests as Shum is heading towards the Sea Shrine. And there is that floater. And a Brackax deciding to not take it. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. But it gives we have you Brack an extra, level one. But it gives you an extra Brack caster. Yeah. But anything we're going to be doing now, you're like, yeah, I want to cast fast or something else. Oh, hello, EXP okay. Pinata. Goodbye, EXP okay. Pinata. Gonna run from it, which is okay, but hey, shows up again. Yeah, hi and bye, EXP Pinata. Again. <laughs> All right, on to mermaids. So, Shum only checked one chest there. Well, what's why? Like, why did we skip five chests? I'm pretty sure what Shum's gonna do is warp back, check the rest of the chests if there's nothing here, as yeah. I don't believe he has wide enough shards in order to be able to do this but that's the chime in the C incentive yep oh yeah C was incentivized I forgot about that <laughs> yeah if we find the other loose here then we know that we're just in a shard hunt so we're starting to count then so that means the other loose is a ribbon okay and Shum's at 17 shards, so with Kraken and Tia, that puts him up to 25. 25. So Only we just need three. three more. As going to kill Lich would honestly kind of suck. Yeah. I can honestly see checking chests down here. We're probably going to find two to three in Marsh, or in a uh, Sky Mirage. And they're really dense. This is very true. But we'll just ask, we'll just have to wait and see what Shum does as he has now entered the left side of C, the Kraken side, if you will. As Wind Fox translates the slab. Yep. Delicious slab. More EXP, no shard just yet on this side, but there are still quite a few chests left if Shum decides to go after them. But, you know, honestly, I don't see him doing it. And he'll have to go into Earth anyway in order to get that cube. Yeah. Which, if that's the case, you might as well go ahead and finish it mm -hmm. and pick up the extra two shards from Lich as Wind Fox lands over 
at the Earth Cave. We still need to find one more shard for Shimbabi, but there's plenty of just random chests. And like we were saying, Sky has so dense. Yeah, Sky has a literal ton to check. Oh. Or there's the one. And that's the warp. And now it's time to go. Yeah, I think we're in Kill Fiend mode now. Oh, I do believe we are in Kill Fiend mode as well. We are in put the pedal to the metal. Which is an interesting thing for a lot of new runners to think. Like, if you know that you can just go, most of the dungeons are pretty short if all you're doing is going straight to the fiend and beating him up. Earth Except is a little Earth. bit feels bad, but ugh. Because Volcano, you end up avoiding so many encounters due to walking on the lava tiles. Mm -hmm. And Sky is, like, really short if all you're doing is just walking straight down the floor and not checking all of the chests. All right, here we go. Bracks are going to be coming out. Swing from the Mazo. Four hits, 412 with crit. Brack one, ineffective. Nope. Brack two, ineffective. Brack three, <laughs> ineffective. ineffective. Okay, we're in Aquatex mode. Let, let's send a few things in Aquatex. Brack four! Ineffective. Brack five. Six. We are well into Quadex range. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but Brack. I know, but... We are oh, not in Quadex range. We are range. not in. He got hot. Oh. Now we are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we were barely out of quad X range. <laughs> Probably. I'm sorry that my rounding, I guess, rounded down instead of up. <laughs> Close enough. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, with that, Shum's going to be heading on down to this Earth Cave to pick up that cube. Just notice Wind Fox is setting out 11 shards. We still got some stuff to find here. Yeah, and Shum is in put the pedal to the metal mode and go. Yeah. The, these two routings through Earth are going to be massively different. Indeed. As Shum's just going to go for it yeah. while Wind Fox is checking everything right now. Grab the vampire chest, because we know we have to, but otherwise, we're just going to go. Do we have an idea what Wind Fox's levels are? Out of curiosity. Uh, looks to be... A little bit lower than Shum. Yeah. I'd say probably about... 18, 19 ish. Yeah. Kashum looks to be about the 21, maybe 22 range. Because mm -hmm. we know that we'd like to have promotion here, but we've got that Mazla, we've got that Ice Sword. Like, this is doable without it. Oh, it's very doable without it. Ah, that's my favorite thing to find in a box. You always open <laughs> up the box and it's house in a box! Just add water. Hey, did, did you see that vampire? That, what, there was a vampire there? What? I see the no. one on Wind Fox's screen. Uh, not for long. Do you, though? Nope. What? Do you really? All right. Shum is just gonna blitz. Yeah. And there's that cube for Wind Fox as well. So this is where a major difference comes into play with just going after the orbs versus checking all of these boxes. And on top of that, yeah. Shum has also had an extremely good run. Are we going to get Zap? Are we going to get Zap? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Speed bump, gonna speed bump. Speed bump, done speed bumped. Ooh, there is an extra ribbon, though, for Wind Fox, so that's nice gonna be a find. nice pickup. 
That's the loose ribbon at that. Oh. I don't have game sounds on, so I didn't hear the jingle. It's not even a matter of hearing the jingle or not. It's a matter of how long Wind Fox was sitting <laughs> there at the box. Which, it was said last night during the reveal stream for this, but in case anyone did miss it or forget, you can always tell, like, if the ribbon is incentivized or something, which one you grabbed, because it will have that jingle. And uh, Sonny just said, like, you'll be sitting there for another minute or two. Okay, yeah, second or it's two. Like, it's like six or seven seconds that you're sitting there. You're like, hey, go stop. Oh, you're the incentive. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the incentive. And this room is a very good one to learn for mm -hmm. your tiles because, yeah, the tiles in Lich's closet there, they're interesting to say the least. Grab that first chest from the front where you think the tile would be and then go between the other two. Exactly. I want to say they put it there because it's like, hey, hey, you're used to being in front. Surprise! It's no longer in front. It's now off to the side. Tiles can be anywhere. Tiles can be evil. And there's that roost stick that we saw the hint for long ago. As Wind Fox makes it to our friend the Lich. <laughs> But if this doesn't highlight the difference on just running straight through a, a dungeon versus checking everything, Wind Fox entered Earth before Shum. Shum has done Earth and 90% of Sky here when Wind Fox just leaves. Like, you can blitz these dungeons. Oh, yeah. And here we go on to maybe Tia. Unless a trip to McDonald's happens. <laughs> Which it doesn't. Nope. And Brack Ineffective. Brack two. Ineffective. Brack three. Come on, show us Brack three. T Rex off power cycle, <laughs> that's nice. Brack yeah. three's ineffective as well. We're going Brack 4. Ineffective. Brack 5. Brack is just not landing tonight. 6. Ineffective. Hold on the fighter. Brack is... 7, 8, and 9 coming up. 7. Ineffective. 8. <laughs> ineffective. Isn't this supposed Nine. to be like a 16% chance? Ineffective. So, if you have counted how many Bracks have missed in total... That is 15. <laughs> Brack 10. Ineffective. Nope. Brack 11. Ineffective. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fighter. Do your job. Sleep comes out. Brack 12. Ineffective. Oh Brack 13. <laughs> Broken Broke. into pieces. <laughs> That was a grand total of 18 missed Brax. I'm sorry, Shum. Oh, my. <laughs> That's how it goes some days, though. Indeed. So in the meantime, we had Windfox head into Lethane, go ahead, grab his Saber Gauntlet, and now is doing a little bit of uh, spell shopping. <laughs> you knew that pun was coming uh, that 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 no comments <laughs> <laughs> all right shum is going into topher 46 minutes 50 seconds it is the mid topher at that which is the topher i need to learn at this point mm -hmm. because Holy cow, there's a massive difference on mid-Topher. 
as you notice, there is a path that just runs straight to Lich 2. Harm 4 is going to come out for 80 damage. Lich attacks the fighter for 1. Zap's going to come out. Ineffective. We are not seeing Exiled to Fourth Dimension. 2 hits for 2 from the Ninja. And just 275 coming out from the Maza. Maza swing again. 4 for 4, 10. And that's it. So in chat, we have a first time seeing uh, Mid Topher here. Yeah. So we skip all those little rubbish floors here before the Fiend floor floors. And we've added in some shortcuts on every single floor, except for Tiamat. Like, there's no way to do that. Oh, is that coming out from Ooh. Carrie? And it misses everybody, fortunately. Fast is going to come out after the fighter swings, unfortunately. So it is a thing. All You're right. Cheeky we nuke. Hey, nothing wrong with Cheeky Nuke, but Carry 2 is down after a swing from the Maza, wielding Knight for 722 onto the Kraken floor with the Gershark with Sahag pack saying hi. All right. It is. The bane of all white mages. <laughs> it is Kraken 2. Fast comes out before the fighter swings. Ninja 4 hits 143. Fighter 7 hits 534. The tail has been picked up by Wind Fox. Heal 3 is going to come out and nuke after two swings. 7 for 416, but Tornado is going to come out. And that Black Wizard's going to survive and not take much damage. Nuke for 105 is going to take down Kraken 2. So, Wind Fox is now in the same position that Shum was a bit ago. We've got 17 shards. We've got both fiends with four shards remaining. So we're getting really, really close to just needing a handful of shards if we're coming. Just three shards, and there's the legendary iron golem counter for Shum. And the Tia two fight coming up. Fast gonna be used on that knight again. And it does go before the knight swings. Knight's gonna swing with fast. Six hits for 524. Ninja with that katana, three for 84. And Tia is just gonna straight up miss. Double temper going out onto that knight, and they both go out beforehand. Quad X, unfortunately, jumping the gun. Six for 548 that time, and just going to wait it out here. Final swing, eight for 655, is going to take down Tia 2, and Shum is on to Chaos. So with that, it is time for a chaos. Going to move one of the ribbons. And that's all that's needed. Here we go. It is time for chaos opening up with temper, saber, wall on the white wizard, fast on the night. Temper goes out. Chaos swings at the fighter. Two hits for 123. Fast goes out. The saber bonk goes out. More temper and a swing. Invis 2 now coming out. Temper again. That's three. Four tempers at that. Invis 2 going to boost the evasion. And here comes the first swing. Eight hits for Ooh. 1330. This chaos is not long for this world. Wait, swing, wait, wait. Six hits. 10, 21. Does it. Get your GGs out. For Shum Bobby finishing first on the stream. Third overall with an official race time .gg time of 50 minutes and 46 seconds. Coming in first was Chanigan with a 49 minute, 22 second run and Guardian Marcus in second with a 49 minute, 43 second run. Let's see if we can get Shum in here for an interview. I mean, I'm hey. pretty sure the answer to that's a yes. GG Shum. I'm sorry for counting your missed Brax. Oh, no, I appreciate someone did because I was absolutely, I was just seeing red. <laughs> yeah. I figured you were, and 
You know how mad I've gotten from Mist Brax, my friend. Yeah, I'm just, I'm looking at it and I'm going, nobody's finished yet. I have a chance at this. And like, between Kraken <laughs> and Tia, there goes my my first. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's all good. Oh. It's all good. This is a friendly race. And uh, I, I certainly don't mind losing to the people I did. <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk about your routing, man. That was on point. <sighs> yeah. It was up until Ordeals, and I, I meant to go to C. I was really just looking for Chime, and I was like, what's the quickest way to get a Chime? And I mm -hmm. forgot that C was incentivized. And then I was like, oh yeah, that's going to be loaded with shards. I should probably go there. But otherwise, yeah, no, I, I think uh, I think I nailed it in the early game, at least. Yeah, yeah. you were pretty much beeline for everything that you needed. I, I enjoy too loose. That's not a... It's not an outrageous flex. That oops, all loose is is a little, little chaotic, and I can keep track of it. I just don't really want to spend the mind space on it. But two <laughs> loose is like just enough, and especially when you find an early loot and an early key, you're like, I don't need to really be looking for this other loose. So right, it becomes. A, I, <laughs> I kept forgetting it was a shard hunt, and so I opened a box. And I was like, oh yes, I have to do this. <laughs> I gotta find those. So. Shum, there's a comment in chat about not using warp in ordeals, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but you did not have the level six charges for warp. When yeah, you that is correct. Ordeals. I bought warp, and I didn't have the charges, so I was trying to. I don't know. I, th I thought I took a a dungeon before then to try to get the warp charge, but maybe mm. volcano, and like it still didn't get it. So I was like, all right, whatever. I'll just reset out if I have to. Yeah, because you went into volcano before going to ordeals, and. I figured it was going to be to attempt to get the one level that you needed in order to get that warp charge. And it just did not pay off this time around. No, that's that's why I took the mummy fight. I mean, had I known that there was an eye in the volcano, I would have gone there, but uh, I didn't need to check trap tiles. You really didn't. And on top of that, that dragon armor was super nice to find. Yeah, I... <sighs> I spent a lot of time in menus. It, they're all like such marginal upgrades. It's like, yeah, this is nice to have, but I've got a 600 health fighter. Do I really need these things? Like, am I spending mm -hmm. time in the menu on purpose or is it just because it's nice to have? And I imagine for the most part in your case, it was, it boiled down, down to it's because they're nice to have. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, I also don't want to bounce out of Topher on these <laughs> streams, yeah. so you know what, I'll spend the extra couple of seconds and uh, forget to move a ribbon but still have a dragon armor, it's fine. Oh yeah. That carry zap was really, really clenching my everything. Yeah, that was the next thing I was going to bring up. Um, how relieved were you after you saw all four misses? <laughs> yeah, no, I, was, I knew I had the ribbon on the white mage and I could have cast life. I just really didn't want the ninja to carry at that point, but... Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's why I had the katana and everything. It was it was fine. I had a backup plan. I just didn't want to use it. Well, that's speaking fair. of some clinching moments here, Wind Fox on Kraken 1. Oh. We've Has got he the tried Kraken 15 the... times? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, thankfully, no. But wow. Took out the thief, took out the black mage, and had the white mage down on the knee. I do appreciate the question of trying to Brack 15 times. <laughs> just that... Oh, I felt great. so bad on that RNG for you. Yeah, it happens. I mean, so realistically, and I guess advice that I would give to the Ducks is don't tunnel vision on that. I mean, I was doing it because I was like, you know what? I've got three casters. I might as well. I'm not going to lose this battle. But after the first two rounds of it not landing, that should have just gone to fast and tempers. Yeah. Kind of got through that. Oh, wow. Could have got through that match a little bit faster. But I want to ask you, you were in the air at 14 minutes. What was your thought with that early of a floater? I figured everyone else had to have it, honestly. Um, it didn't feel super early because progression just sort of forced you over to Dwarf Cave. And so you'd have to really... Uh, I, don't, I don't know what would have convinced me to go to Crescent before Marsh Cave. But once you get the key, you just sort of walk back and then it happens. Mm-hmm. Well, and that was the, the routing change here. You guys had the canoe, and so Wind Fox went straight over to Crescent and uh, Volcano and Ice instead of going down to Marsh. 
yeah, I think I stepped into Elfland before going to Marsh because I was looking for Warper Exit, and I found the exit, and I think I had the charge for that when I went into Marsh. You did. It, it, yeah, it doesn't feel good to do an early Marsh dive without some way of getting out like that. Um, really lucked into the, the key being there. Mm -hmm. But I was also considering if there was a trap tile. I mean, I have a thief, take it to 15. Um, yeah. And check those locked boxes anyway. Yeah, because we were going over your levels trying to figure out, okay, you have one charge of it, you use it down on the bottom level, but you didn't have a house to be able to use it on the top one. So that's why you went ahead and reset it out. Yeah, it, it was... There was a half a second of hesitation because I was like, that's a gold plus three or something, I right. think. And I was like, eh, am I really gonna? No, it's, it. you don't save a, a minute by wearing armor. Like, that's not mm -hmm. going to happen. So, um, yeah, just got to get out of there. Got to go fast. I mean, unless well, something goes catastrophically wrong and you wipe, but in this case, nothing went catastrophically wrong. At, right. at this point, I figure... Right, like, I've got Invis 2 and Invis and a Roost Stick. Like, if I'm getting hit, there's a problem. It shouldn't matter what armor I have on. I mean, if you're getting hit, you're getting crit. Yeah, that that bracelet's not going to do much. Nope. No Absorb Boost would do much for that. Okay, so Windfox here pulling Tia 1. I believe I saw four shards needed, so this should put him ready to go into Topher. I do believe so. Eight for 552 right off the bat. Pretty good. Mm hmm. You know, no Brax coming out yet. Yeah, I don't think Windfox is going to rely on Brax yeah. because, yeah, that second swing just. Flat out That's all you down. Needed. Yep. Level 22. Feeling good. I'd like it maybe another level or two, but we've got the armor. We've got the equipment. Probably going to go promote and then call it good. And it looks like promotion is Ooh. being skipped. Okay. I only would like it for that extra armor we found and the katana that we have. But, hey, we're going to swing the Maza. The fighter is going to be our carry. We've got that ice armor. Like, we're good. So I don't know if you caught where the incentive ribbon was, Shum. I did. I saw it was on Earth 4. But um, this part of the benefit of mid Topher is, like, if something goes wrong, it's really not that big of a deal. No, because you can get back down to the bottom so and quickly. I, I had life on the night, so if I needed to just move the single ribbon that I did have, you know what, go for it. I don't even remember where I found that. It was somewhere obvious. Uh, volcano armory behind uh, yes, the trial. Yep. Yes, I actually had to stop and think about it for a second. Oh, Windfox forgetting the shortcut here on the volcano floor. We or may not down and over, but I forget this one myself. I this is literally the first time I've run mid Topher um, in a race, so. Before race night actually started, I loaded up a game with zero encounters, and I was like, where are these shortcuts? I know they exist. <laughs> and just ran right through. I can't blame you for doing that. I mean, it's really good info to have. Running through Kraken's floor the normal way as well. Mm -hmm. And question in chat here. So in mid-Topher, is that first door locked with the plate? Yes. So... You need the loot and the key there instead of down further. Yep, instead of climbing up to the third floor and then going back down to the second floor with the locked mm -hmm. door, you instead have the loot plate and the locked door there on the first floor. And it's kind of easy to remember it because the two chests are in that room like they would be for that, that locked door. All right, Temper going out on two. That Fighter, Harm 4 going out. Fighter's going to swing. Eight hits, 585, and that's a dead Kraken. Yeah, these Fiends not really putting up much of a fight, minus that carry zap. They really aren't. And I mean, the bosses are all 70 to 150, so mm -hmm. for the most part, they're going to be extremely tame. Yeah. Tia punching down our thief, but not taking them yet. Not taking them down yet. 
Not yet, but it might happen soon. With this Masa, with some other stuff coming out, uh, we probably got it. <laughs> two hits, two damage. Thief saying, I help! Oh, that's a dead white mage. Ooh. And without promotion, our fighter does not have life. However, we did have that cure plus magic. Do we have life on... Who had that? Uh, I believe it's the thief that has the clean magic. Or the clean, yeah. Actually, that's we... that's a good question. Shum, did you check to see if the thief had life because of clean magic? I did not. I, I just memory hole when there's level 8 magic if it's not teleport. Yeah. Also noticing, I don't think Windfox cured up at least the thief, so... I don't know if we were out of potions or what there. Could have just decided to not cure up. But fast goes out, temper next, crack goes out, gonna miss mm -hmm. both that fighter and the black mage. Nine hits for 897, another temper coming out. Fighters on a knee. Nine hits, 687, that's a yep. terminated chaos. That, that Mazda will do it. <laughs> indeed. Windfox finishing sixth place overall, second here on the stream, with an official racetime.gg time of an hour, two minutes, and 54 seconds. Get your GGs out for Windfox. And with that, we have Windfox here in the booth with us. GGs, Windfox. Yo, thank you. GGs, Jim. A good game. So, talk us through the seed. What did you see? What did you like? What are your thoughts? Um. Well, luckily the winner tournament helped a lot with chess <laughs> locations for Shard Hunt. Um, even though I didn't win a single game, it still helped me prep for this specific week in the Duck Derby. Right. Which I think think is week three. Maybe week four? I don't remember. But I know there's a shark hunt somewhere in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, with, when, when, I, when I look at flags, when I see like Masa or Katana or any of the, the weapons are incentivized, I will... If it's not shark hunt, I will just skip every chest in the game. Right. Knowing that I'm getting a weapon and just hope for sweeper magic or some sort of instant kill magic. Um... Obviously, Shard Hunt's a bit different. You're stuck full clearing the game. Mostly. Right. So, one of the big route diversions that I think you'll see as you go on later, you got that canoe pretty early, and then you got pushed on over to Crescent Lake. Was Marsh in the back of your minds at all then? Um, I wasn't going to enter Marsh until I had the key or level 15. Mm -hmm. Just, I wasn't going in. And then the troll key being there. In Marsh, yeah. Of course it was. Yeah. Yeah, which is why you saw me farm a couple of Agamas to try to get to 15 just for the thief to die at level 14. Right. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I guess I guess that that's happening today. So the, the grind was specifically for the level 15 lockpick? Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I think the eye, the eye trap files were... In ice, I believe, I believe it was either ice or volcano. One of the two. Ice was volcano. Or volcano. sorry, I was volcano. Yeah, the volcano armory floor. Mm -hmm. Which is also nice to find. But yeah, I was hoping for for sub sub sixty on these flags, just short. Yeah, not too far off though. Like really, really not bad. Sonny, you got some questions? So I wanted to ask you if you had thought about promoting at all Windfox, because you had picked up some very good night gear. You could have moved the ice armor over to the ninja, and you had that katana in hand. So when I found the Masa in Dwarf Cave, my only goal was to get that thief to 15, and if he ate dirt the rest of the seed, I didn't care. I was going mm -hmm. to pretty much three-man the rest of the seed. Um, I didn't care about the thief. He was just there for the lock picking slash running when needed. Um, 
I run. I ran the weekly earlier today. I'm gonna try to think about my thought process without spoiling that seed. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just actually. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna talk about that seed because there's there's too many spoils <laughs> with, with, with 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 what I want to say. So I'm not even gonna talk about right. that seed. <laughs> Things happened uh, <laughs> that led into other things, and then things happened. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I was about um, to say, let me, give you, let me give you the best way to put it without giving any spoilers. <laughs> yeah, just that that that, 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 that seed this morning influenced some of my decisions in the race tonight. I'm just going to say that. Right. That is absolutely fair. Uh, but yeah. yeah, that was, that was the only question I really had. Um, outside of that, I mean, you played fairly well, all things oh, considered. Yeah. yeah. I really think the major divergence was heading off to Crescent there at the beginning, just letting that, that, that key kind of be a troll for a little bit. Yeah. Like, like if I had gone to Marsh, I just would have found the key and been like, okay, mm -hmm. well, oh, sure. I guess lockpicking is kind of worthless. <laughs> but definitely going to be a good, like, watch it back, see what's up. You made some really good decisions, and there were times that you and Shimbabi were kind of doing the same things, and just see what's going on. Yeah, um, I'll def definitely be watching it back for sure. Um, yeah, I, I definitely feel like personally <laughs> since Winter Tournament I've gotten better. Obviously, those who've been doing the asyncs and seeing my times, it's it's been showing that I've been getting better. Yeah. Every day, I mean, just get a little bit better and call it good. <laughs> and it's all about those reps. I mean, I can tell it to you from being a duckling six years ago at this point. The more you play, the better you become. Mm-hmm. But I think with that, we should probably head into final thoughts. What do you think, Jay? Because uh, I think we should let these runners and those in chat have the rest of their night back. And y'all have been yeah. amazing. So Shoom, first place on stream, third overall. Final thoughts, my friend. Just thank you again for... Uh hosting doing the commentary as Lodo for the the restream um I assume one of you three also did the tracking so uh <laughs> <Oslo's yeah. laughs> pulling double duty yeah nice. Oslo pulled double just uh yeah thank you all for for hosting this I, I love the the weekly races picking up again um GG to Windfox um yeah that that 62 minutes is a a great time for a duck on on really any of these flags mm -hmm. um so just keep at it and I I hope that uh I'll see you around more pickup races as well. And uh, I guess at this point, I also just want to plug, I, I'd like to do some more VOD reviews. So if anybody wants to throw some VODs my way, I would love to uh, hang out, watch some play, and, and give some pointers for those that want to hear them. But otherwise... I am uh, up on that. Yes, yeah. I second what Jay just said, because Shum is an amazing teacher. Aw, oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'll leave it at that. Have a good night, everyone. I got you, my friend. Have a good night. Windfox, the floor is yours for final thoughts, my friend. Uh, yeah, thanks for the restream. Uh, thanks for allowing me to be on the restream for this race tonight. Definitely appreciate it. Um, Shum, expect a message from me <laughs> on that offer. It will be happening in the next couple of days. But yeah. Not a problem. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the future weeks of the Duck Derby participating and just overall getting better. I mean, you have improved a lot since Winter Tournament, and I know you'll keep improving. You're, oh, yeah. you're going to be one of those that's going to be scary to see after everything's set and done. But, you know, we still have a lot of the boot camp remaining as next up, here in three days on the 7th, we'll have luffy doing the floaterless class <laughs> and then the next or the upcoming wednesday is some person i don't know who showing <laughs> off the free enterprise flags 
Yeah, I, I hear you some, you know, jerk face I've been calming with all night long. I don't know. Yeah, something you know. like that. <laughs> but, yeah, so Flutterless and Free Airship next week. Two sides of the same coin, oh, yeah. but very, very different routing between the two. You're going to want to catch both of those, as well as the races that happen with these flag sets as they're going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. But Jay Shy, I brought us in. I'll let okay. you take us out. Well, a couple more just little housekeeping things here going on. Remember, if you see any of this that you like, if you want to learn how to play the randomizer, if you want to just like uh, goof around a little bit and kind of get familiar with it, jump on into the Discord, grab the duckling roll. The ducklings are our, our new runners. We definitely help out everyone who asks Make sure that you know everything going on. This is only week two of our Duckling Boot Camp. So if you are interested at all, it is not too late. You can go back in. You can get the seeds from last week. You can go check out the streams from last week. Learn how to play a fighter. Learn how to play a thief. Monday was a black belt. Obviously, today was our two loose shark hunts. And if you're jumping in right now, on uh, you can still play our Duckling Weekly, which is our black belt for this week. And you can play one of these seeds that you just saw here on our Async Wheatley. So everything is geared towards our new runners right now. So really, really jump on in. Let us help you out. And we always say, let us teach you how to beat us because it really does happen. A couple other things just to touch on really quick. Uh, Got to do a little bit of self-promotion here. So our restreamer Oslato and I kind of started a new little thing here. And on Tuesday of next week, we'll actually be interviewing your Duckling Dons. So if you've got any questions for Saracen and Luffy, the people who put all of this together, we've got a mailbag in our OJ Power Hour planning channel, or our, our channel, that you can feel free to drop a question in and maybe one of the Dons will answer it. If you've got a certain thing you want to know or why does this happen or why does that happen or, you know, just something crazy about them, drop it in. Let us hear what, let us hear what you have to say. But until then... With Zonyrath here in the booth, with uh, Ozlato, our restreamer and tracker tonight, I'm Jay Shidel, and we'll see you guys later. Bye.